All right, somebody asked me whenever going to look at a 2011 to 2014 Ford F-150, what are some things that that you would look at to make sure that you're getting a good deal? The guy had 100,000 miles on it and he's trying to sell it. The person did not disclose the, um, the amount that he was paying for it, but I would assume it's somewhere probably in the ballpark of around eighteen to twenty thousand dollars for that vehicle. That's what a lot of these trucks are going for now with that many miles on it, even though they are older. One of the first things I, I suggest people look at is look at the valve covers on the truck. Make sure there's no oil buildup around the valve covers, and if there is, try to identify where it's coming from. Sometimes it's coming from the back of the passenger side cylinder head, and there's a reseal that has to happen with the vacuum unit that's on the back of the cylinder head. Not all models have that unit there, but that is a major problem for them where oil comes from is the seal flattens out and then it doesn't seal anymore and then oil starts leaking down the back of the passenger side of the engine. Another thing to look at that's common failure on those are, look at the turbo lines. The turbo oil drain and feed line can leak and also the coolant lines will leak. Get an idea on what you're dealing with there because a lot of shops are doing cab off for the coolant lines because the turbo has to come off for one of the lines to come off. And when the turbo comes off, a lot of times you snap the turbo stud into the, in the exhaust manifold and then you're replacing an exhaust manifold wire there as well. And exhaust manifold stud, exhaust manifold gasket, uh, turbo fittings and lines, uh, typically coolant and an oil change as well will all go with that. And it's thousands of dollars to get those lines. And uh, hopefully the bolts in the cab participate and come off if that's the route that they're going to do. Because it is a cleaner job. If they come out, you have the option to either replace those bolts if you want to while you're there. Or just tell them if they come out clean. Or you have to use a mini ductor to heat up the head of it over and over again to transfer the heat through the bolt. To see if you can get some relief pulling it out. If those bolts can be reused, then use your discretion as the technician if you, as a customer, allow him to do that, uh, to do so. So the oil leaks, the turbo coolant and uh, oil line, oil lines going to the turbo. And then uh, another thing to look at is, is the water pump on those. If you, can, if you can lay down underneath it and they got the shield off, a lot of guys won't put the shields back on look up at the bottom of that water pump and see if it's been leaking see if it has any like dry deodorant looking white powdery crust marks down the front of the cover um, another thing to look for in these is the front cover leaks over by the AC compressor if that area is covered in oil that's typically about a 12 to 14 hour job to pull that front cover and reseal that front cover because there's no gasket in uh, the turbocharged models. The 5 liter has a gasket around it and it's less likely less likely to, le to leak but the 2.7 and the 3.5 if I remember correctly they use silicone TA357 to seal the front cover. They don't have the gasket and they're more prone to leaking. So make sure that front cover all the way around the front of the engine doesn't have any oil building up or if it's just a little bit probably is going to be like a year or two before you'll need to have a front cover reseal done. Check out the condition of your hoses. Check out the condition of your belts. A lot of these trucks have a two-piece belt design. One belt uh, is basically driven off of the crank to the AC compressor and then the other belt drives all the other critical components like the alternator, the water pump, things of that nature. Um, look at the battery condition. I will a lot of times back away from buying a vehicle from somebody because they have a crusty, nasty battery and they haven't been taken care of it. And if it's a nice or premium battery, you really want it to be taken care of. But if somebody just threw a good battery in there and then they let it go to hell and let it rot, uh, so, so it's kind of a red flag for me. Um, look at, actually physically look at the cool, cooling condition. Look at the brake fluid condition. Ask when the last time the services have been done for a, a tune-up. You know, if they're at 100,000 miles and they haven't done a tune-up yet, I typically am like, you know what? I'm going to have to pass. Um, just for the simple fact that I don't know what I'm going to get myself into. I know plugs are rated for about 80 to 100,000 miles now. 
but I like people that like maintenance and about 50,000 miles on those applications on the EcoBoost applications anyway about 40 to 50,000 miles is when I start seeing misfires and if I know a person's been on top of their game and they're listening to my recommendations right at about 40 to 50,000 miles or changing plugs I feel pretty safe about that uh, transmission fluid condition you're typically not going to be able to check but request that the person you're buying the vehicle from not have the vehicle warmed up before you get there please have the vehicle cold when I get there so when I started I get the complete experience from the cold start all the way through so I can listen for a uh, timing chain slap or cam phaser rattle or something like that even though this model didn't have the cam phaser rattle issues the later models had it was still an issue from time to time and there was timing chain issues from time to time so at 100,000 miles you really want to get that full experience on cold start all the way through if you got that rattle on startup it's typically a front cover teardown phasers chains guides tensioner whole nine yards it's expensive um, and then you also want to feel for when you take off and you, you got your your trans you know semi cold a little bit not completely warmed up and you take off you want to feel for slippage you want to feel for any kind of binding and stuff going on you want to look for engine codes and things of this nature because um, the 2011 to 2014 had lead frame issues there was a situation uh, not too long ago where a customer came in in 2013 and he had like a dozen codes present in the computer sometimes the vehicle would just randomly die it didn't want to shift right it didn't want to run right it had all kinds of issues going on and I noticed one of the codes was turbine shaft speed and something about temperature or something it didn't like and I said ah transmission lead frame these had that set that uh, compliance or a customer satisfaction program where you would update the lead frame to a new one because the transmission harness that goes all to all the valve body solenoids and stuff and all the connection points would crack and have all kinds of malfunctions so make sure that's already been updated and done if not you're probably going to have that issue in the future especially at a hundred thousand miles it typically happens right at about 90 to 120 thousand miles somewhere in there it's normally normally when you start seeing the lead frame issues we've done a lot of them a lot of lead frames but they're, I think they're on national back order last time I looked, it said 50,000 units on order uh, 10,000 units pending to be released and then they kept they kept moving it an additional week so there may be 30,000 on back order now but it's a huge problem and if you try to get the Dorman or the Napa ones or something like that you might get one good one out of every three or four that you order so you gotta drop the pan you gotta you know clean out the valve body and do valve body it's sometimes you'll run into a pass-through connector on the trans that cracks or is no good as well it's a pain in the butt um, make sure your uh, pinion seal is not leaking front diff pinion seal and uh, rear diff pinion seal get a good idea on your output shaft um, from your uh, transfer case back or your transfer case forward and and back actually uh, moving inside the vehicle make sure the Sirius XM radio works a lot of times that antenna base on the roof will crack and it runs through that top right corner and it goes across the back side of the headliner where the visor's at or no where yeah it goes from the top in or it comes from the from the top in and then cuts over to the corner where the A pillar's at goes down the A pillar to back behind the dash and then crosses over inside there I've seen people try to wire in their own connections or make their own repairs to that connection for that. You can't kind of you can't repair that unless you have the professional equipment to do so. It takes a special connector and uh, crimping style on that. 99.9% um, .9 of the time, it has to be replaced. It's not you're not fixing it. So um, I had a couple people try to do their own repairs and radio shops end up missing messing up uh, the connector. And then me have to order a brand new one and put the assembly on. It's like 60, 70 bucks for a Sirius XM antenna. And then everything comes back online. Make sure your heated seats work inside because that could be costly to pull the seats apart, put pads and stuff in, or thermal electric devices, or a little small 
$100 module underneath the, I think it's the passenger seat. Uh, and then one thing that everybody always forgets to mention to talk about, the sliding back glass. If you can push the rear defrost button and the light flashes, it's got a fault. Yeah, it definitely has a fault. In order to troubleshoot that fault, you got to get up behind the seat, release the lock, get behind the the rear cab liner, unplug the connector for the sliding glass, and then take a bobby pin or a safety pin or some way that you can jump the two connection points together and then hit the button again. And at that point, if you hit the button and the lights stay lit up, you have a rear window problem. The whole window has to be replaced. You can't fix it. Make sure you open and close your sunroof. Make sure you open and close your rear back glass. Make sure you do all that stuff. Make sure all that works because those are the major malfunction points on that truck. Make sure that open and close the doors quite a bit. Make sure all the locks and windows and stuff continue to function because the wires break inside the door jams. Wires break inside the door jams and then things stop, stop functioning. Things of that nature. This is the new one. And then um, one thing I forgot. If it has a spare tire on the truck, make sure you actually operate the spare tire, run it all the way down, run it all the way up. Because a lot of them come in, people never check the spare tire and it's all bound up. And then I have to cut the cable out of the truck and put a new spare tire assembly and stuff in there. Yeah, it's a pain in the butt. And while you're back there checking that spare tire and stuff, lay down underneath the back of the truck and look at the, the connections at the rear of the frame. Where the frame comes back and meets in with the rear crossbar. And those connections come down and kind of pan over to your fifth wheel, wheel sorry, your, fifth, your receiver area, your receiver hitch area. Unplug those connections and look inside those connections. Make sure they're not all rotted out. Make sure you pay attention to the backup camera quality as well. That's common issues that I see with these that people don't they don't look at you inspect all these areas that make sure you open and close the tailgate quite a bit that assembly starts to jam up in the back and it's kind of hard to open and close the tailgate it takes a couple hours to get in there take everything apart clean it um, once it's froze up and I have to sit there and actuate the lever over and over and over and over again to get it to free up Without replacing parts, you're better off just replacing the parts at that point because then it's going to save you some money. Uh, just make sure that, you know, it, I've, I've given you enough to go off of now and uh, I hope you find this vehicle somewhat helpful or interesting because these are the nuances with the two, 2011 and 2015 Ford F-150. And even most of that could go all the way till, to now. To, to to, to today you know um, but 2011 and 2014 especially thanks guys be blessed have a great day sorry for the long video